So, I mean, in the last a day and a half, I mean, we had a lot of very distinguished speakers that come from different backgrounds, and, you know, it was really a pleasure to, to hear a um, lot of interesting conversation in the last a day and a half. So I feel privileged from that standpoint. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do here is that, you know, I'm just going to throw some ideas. Actually, you know, it's not, you know, something which is all encompassing or, you know, it is like everything I'm going to say and just share with you. But some of the, th you know, thought process and some of the topics probably uh, you might like to consider and think when you think about what is disruptive technology and what is the CEO's vision going forward. So to do that, let me just, you know, so this is the kind of an agenda I have for about 45 minutes or so. Um, I'm, I'm doing a little introduction about who we are in Acosta because that will probably, you know, provide you with some context about what we intend to do. We'll talk about some of the disruptive technologies that's available. And then I'll try to match that from a CEO standpoint, you know, what he's asking for and what technology possibly will be of assistance to you. Now, technology per se will not do everything, right? You still need people to come and implement and see that it is implemented in, in the right way, right? So it's, it's out there and it's good to know, okay? So that's me. I kept this slide because in, in case if anybody is interested to get in touch with me, you got my LinkedIn profile, my email address. So, you know, it's just there in the, in the deck, okay? So I'll not spend any more time. I think I got a, a fantastic introduction before this. So who is Acosta? I doubt that anybody here has really heard about Acosta much, but we are there everywhere. And it is very, very likely that you guys have actually dealt with some of our employees, and we call them associates. So for example, I mean, if you go to a Best Buy and you're trying to buy a Samsung watch or a phone or, or any of the devices, the people you are interacting, actually, they are our employees. So, so, you know, so typically our clients like Samsung's and, and Campbell's and so on and so forth, they have outsourced their sourcing, their, their sales you know, services to us. So that's where we come into the picture. So you don't know that there are employees, but in reality, they're all our employees. We are based out of Jacksonville. We've got about 35,000 employees. We are number one and number two in every brand that we are in. We've got about 100 plus offices and we've got about 200,000 outlets. So we are kind of in a sizable company and we're doing okay. We are owned by Carlyle, which is the fourth largest investment company in the world. So combined between us and all other, all other companies that Carlyle owns, we are close to about 800,000 employees. So we get that leverage of the, of the scale, okay? I mean, if you have any questions anywhere, please you know, stop me, it's not, it's supposed to be interactive. Okay, so you see, I mean, these are all our channels. You see Publix, I'm sure that, you know, if you go to Publix or if you go to Costco, Walmart, so these are the different channels that we represent. The clubs are there, the military channel is there, the grocery channel is there, convenience channel is there, pet mark, electronics, e-commerce, name it. We are there everywhere. Wherever there is any sales happening, very likely we are there, okay? So that's the kind of the workforce. But in the previous one, I showed you that we have about 35,000 employees. However, even if we do have 35,000 employees, we hire about 15,000 employees every year. And do you know the reason for that? High turnover. This is a retail business, very high turnover. So that's typical of us. Uh, between brand new hire, rehire, and deployment together, that comes to roughly about 35,000 every year. So that's the volume and we're talking about, massive volume. Okay. Uh, these are some of the brands, as you can see. I mean, we, you know, pride ourselves as being either number one or number two, as you can see. Our competitors. I saw someone from Unilever earlier in the day. Uh, you know, other than that, I mean, we have pretty much 90% of the business. We are number one, and and we take pride and we intend to maintain that leadership in that market space, right? That depends on the people, right? So here's the thing. When you look at it at a broader perspective, so whenever there's a purchase happening, excepting for some you know, merchandise, like you know, your, your shirts and pants and, and the garment business, other than that, most of the other businesses, we are there. And our experience is you are there out of store, you are in the store, you are at the shelf, or you're online. So we have covered all the four areas. It's, it's a very interesting, you know, space to be, and nobody knows us. 
That's the interesting part of it. And you interact with our employees all the time, okay? The interesting thing here is that, so the challenges that comes with this is that we have to hire that many people, we have to put them in the shelf, or send them to the store, train them of not our product, but train them of our clients' products. So they have to talk like as if they are representing Samsung or they're representing Microsoft or, or Sony or whatever that may be, right? Okay. So I did have some conversation with our new CEO who's joined about four months ago. And some of the themes and some of the ideas, I've actually taken direct interaction with him. This is what he wants. So stay on top and align to make a good HR planning. Business demands agility and speed of change. This is really interesting. So he's telling us like, you know, I mean, there is a business going on over there and you guys from HR, you do our business. And there's agility required and there's speed of change required. And you guys have to be on top of that, right? It's probably, you know, sounds, I guess, I mean, similar to the other organizations as well, but, you know, typically we, we have this as a very important, um, you know, outlook from the CEO. The other thing, you know, we have discussed earlier, and I know, I mean, there has been quite a bit of discussions about the culture. Culture plays a very important role. Company culture is important for success. We can survive unless there's a good culture which promotes many different things, right? Decrease voluntary termination, provide channels for employees to ask questions. So this is exactly the word he asked me. Are there enough channels? Do they know where to go, where to call, what to do? Look for opportunities and manage their career. There has been quite a few, you know, earlier in the discussions where we have heard about the careers and success and so on. This is CEO himself talking to me, you know? Hire right and ensure good candidate experience. Really important, you know? From the beginning to the end, if your beginning is not good, no matter what you do later on, there is always a bitter taste in your mouth. You don't want to do that, right? Understand what they're looking for. You know, I mean, everybody has got a different perspective. They've come here to work, but not the same work. There are different type of works, and there are different type of things that they're looking for. Ensure engaged and productive workforce, right? So obviously, I mean, if they are engaged and they're not productive or they're productive and not engaged either way, we lose our, our revenue. Maintain highest level of compliance, you know, because we hire so many people, there's so many people, they just go, and we're trying to control as much as we can, but they are going, it's a retail business, right? There are a lot of people out here who are part-timers, and this is the business that we have. But to survive in this business, what do we need to do? We really have to be compliant. So that's a very important, you know, you typically would not hear that from the CEOs because it is kind of granted. But we heard that. Okay. I'll talk about the disruptive technology. Now, technology is always disruptive. But I'm going to speak about some of the technologies which is particularly relevant here. Okay? And, and then I will try to match and mix that in terms of the CEO's priorities, what technology could possibly play for you, okay? Future of work, and I had the you know, opportunity to talk to several people in the last couple of days. Um, you know, the future of work is changing. There is going to be more and more automation. There will be driverless car at some point in time. There will be more 3D printings, which I've seen in my previous company in, um, in Campbell's. I have seen that an old factory and a newer factory. The newer ones are probably three times the size and one third of the total number of people that they hire. There are robots everywhere. It is a reality, okay? Cloud computing and cloud technology is the consumerism of ERPs and move to the cloud. It's a definite, distinct trend. I heard about Workday earlier. I heard about Oracle SCM Fusion. I think, you know, Christina was talking about that. Uh, Carolyn, right? I, I heard about a few other technologies. The key here is, is really, I mean, if you look at all these technologies, they probably deliver something similar or something, you know, at par, little less, little more. But if you ask me, what's the real difference? Yes, it's all there in cloud, so it's secured. The maintenance is less. But I will point out one difference, main difference. And that main difference, again, you know, which goes to the previous point is, Extensive use of artificial intelligence. Extensive use of artificial intelligence. And I'll explain that to you. What does it mean? You know, I was in the earlier you know, discussion where people were talking about, okay, 
work dates in cloud. It's a good product. It's a superb product. What does it do? Oh, it's got analytics. Do you really use analytics? Because you know, even today, the adoption of analytics is so, so low. Do you really use analytics? So what is the differentiation? And the differentiation in my mind is what they call it as artificial intelligence. And I'll explain that. Very simple words. If you look at the old ERPs, like you know, the PeopleSoft and SAPs of the world, and I'm sure that you know, if you had any of this experience, you, know, you would have binders after binders you know, where they would have user, exp you know, uh, user manuals, you know, how to use the system, and you know, page after page of, of screenshots. right? That's gone. It's all intelligence-based. I mean, it's like this, you know, if you go to Yahoo or if you go to Google or if you go to Facebook, you know, if you search the same information, the result will be different and I can guarantee you. So you try it and you try it and somebody else tries it over there. You go and you search and not only what you're searching, but where you are searching. So where you are searching, I mean, for example, if you're searching in Jacksonville or if you're searching here, in Orlando, and if you're looking for Italian restaurant, it will give you a very different search result. Now that was Google, because it was capturing your location. Now think about it is that, and I have a slide down below, which is talking about you know, the social media. Facebook has crossed Google as a search engine. And do you know why? Because they have added more data points. And what these data points are, I'm not only going to tell you like you like an Italian restaurant in this area, but I'm going to also tell you like where you have been in the past and what typically you have liked. And where you have experienced, where you have shared that experience with your friends, with your relatives, with your close ones, and what comments. So I'm going to give you much more relevant information. Can you imagine the power of that? So where Workday differentiates with the others? They were very quick in the HR world to embrace that technology. And what does it mean? I'll talk about it a little later, but just to give you an idea, think about your ESS, think about your MSS. If I can get you very quickly what you want to do, manager, supervisor, or whoever that may be, if I'm able to quickly able to get you what you want to do, that's my whole intention. Nobody teaches you how to use Facebook. Nobody teaches you how to use Google. And nobody should be there to teach you how to use Workday or any of these new technologies, right? It should be so seamless. Live streaming and videos, this is another area, you know, which is really gaining importance. Nobody wants to do a lot of things, you know, which is not interactive. Nobody wants to read. Nobody wants to, you know, that kind of a thing. It's more video-based and it's really taking traction and I'll explain where. Use of Mobile technology, I mean, we all know about this. I mean, this is like everywhere. It's the part of our life, and we'll talk about that as well. We have mobile workforce out of our 37,000 employees, 35,000, 37,000 employees, probably about 24,000 of the employees are in the field. They go to the different stores, they go to different events, they go and do different you know, functions. So they are all the time mobile. And how hard it is today can you imagine that because of the rules and regulations, where did you really work? And I got to pay you, where did you really work? The tax structures are different. So I need to capture all of that information. And I have to pay you on time, and I have to pay you the correct money, and I have to build the client, by the way, so that it's also accurate. So it's a lot of that's coming. Um, social texting for collaboration and, and conversational commerce. This conversational commerce is the most important thing that I'm seeing in the recent days. You guys probably have heard about WhatsApp. WhatsApp, who knew? Three guys in the garage created this software. When I saw that it was sold for $18 billion, my head started spinning. Three guys, they worked probably a year, year and a half. And my God, you're selling for $18 billion. And Mark, my friend, I'm kidding. You bought it for $18 billion. Have you really thought about what? Why did you think that way? And by the way, three years later, everybody is evaluating that product as it was a steal. The product should have cost it a lot more. It should have cost it a lot more. $18 billion. So that's the new economy and we're talking about. 
and it's all based on the consumerism and the conversational commerce. As you talk, as you interact, it's the chatting and all of that. And, and chatting, again, I mean, the social texting is, is a very important aspect of, of our HR business. Most of the people who are there on the field, most of the people that we are interacting, they are very likely will receive and respond to you through a text message. Very, very likely. If you are going out for a blast recruitment policy, you know, if you, if you are looking for recruiting blast number of people, large number of people, reach out. The best way is text. And most of our HR technology does not offer that. And whoever does, they will be having a clear edge in the near future. Workday has it, by the way. Okay. And finally, I mean, there has been a lot of talk earlier about the advances in, in predictive analytics. The predictive analytics is more important today than any time before. And why is it important? You talked about Vizier. I saw the product and I loved it. The Vizier is also, and I had the opportunity to actually to talk to the gentleman who has founded the, the company, and I wanted to see that what his roadmap was. The real test of any of the analytic software, and again, you know, I come from the technology background, is not what you are offering me today. It is what you will offer me in the next five years from now, or three years, or four years from now. Because once you give a report to your CEO, you, you've given it a few times, he's bored. He's looking for more. And that's where I had been in that business, you know, Cognos and all of that in the earlier days. Once you give it to them, OK, no big deal. All right, I took some decisions. I did something. I did here, there. But it's really the roadmap. And the roadmap, if you're looking for a product for the roadmap, the real important thing in my mind is how many data sets is it looking for? So typically in the HR world, I mean, you would see that, you know, your, your performance, your high performance as you showed, you know. There is really one single data point, typically. You're rating at the end of the year. There may be one more if you're very lucky. What I liked about Workday was that they were looking for hundreds of data points, how you have interacted, and some of it structured and some of it unstructured. So it does not give you one rating. It gives you a range. And it's the newer generation of the, of the predictive analytics is based on not one data, but a large data set, and not giving you one definitive answer, but a range of possibilities. And through those range of possibilities, you know, you could do regression, correlation, all the statistical, you know, the part of it, the test of hypothesis or whatever, right? But the real thing is that I, I, I have much more information available to me where I can make sound judgment. And that's what I think you should look for. Any questions so far? I mean, do you like to add anything on this list? I mean, this is what I have been interacting with a lot of people, and I felt this is the list. But there could be some more. Anything I've missed on the list? Yes, sure. So what is the disruption here? So, the dis so companies will grow. We grew from 5,000 employees to about 40,000 employees in a very short time, right? So companies will grow. And on the other side, there are all kinds of technologies available. What technology can I use to foster that growth and still be profitable and competitive, right? So there is the first slide I had was you know, where we talked about um, the CEO priorities. Yes, growth is kind of given. He's saying, yeah, OK. You know, nobody hires a CEO in today's world not to grow the company, make it profitable, better, right? But from a people standpoint, this is all from the people standpoint, what he's looking for from me, OK? How much time I have? I don't know. I didn't check the watch. I'm good? OK. Mm -hmm. So again, I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about 
the technologies, but I will talk what's my personal experience. My personal experience, I've implemented both big ERPs. I implemented Oracle. I'm in implementing actually Oracle Fusion. And I've also implemented Workday. And that's why I could see the comparison of these two, of two very distinct products, which is actually the front runners today. And, and really, I felt that the real differentiation is the use of artificial intelligence. Now, they don't tell you like it's artificial intelligence. So I went to their workshops, and you know, I know, you know a few others, you know, you know, Kim and a few others have actually seen their, their labs. And I was impressed to see that what a next generation product should look like. Watson is a product that they've been trying to use for a long time. I haven't seen much product development um, in terms of HR offerings. So, you know, I mean, everybody knows that, you know, as far as Watson is concerned, I mean, it can calculate, you know, at super magical speed and probably defeat any of the chess players in the world, you know, combine together their intelligence. All of that I hear. But what it really means for as HR professional, I'm yet to see. If anybody has any ideas, yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, true. I mean, yes. I mean, as I said, it's not all comprehensive. I mean, there are other areas, you know, where there is a lot of things that's going on. I'm primarily seeing that as a company, where I stand right now, and what are my objectives, and and the technologies available, what is the match? They're actually working in HR now. So we they are doing it. Yeah, we have IBM for African tracking systems. They have a talent suite. Okay. And what they're trying to do with it is they they have some predictive and prescriptive analytics associated with Is it commercially available? Yes. Can you? OK, I'll contact you. I mean, I have. Last time I contacted IBM for analytics uh, like that, you know, from because this has been in the industry for a long time. I didn't feel it was probably four or five years ago. And I didn't feel that it was still you know, commercially viable at that time, at least. Yes, please. Why do you think texting has really uh, taken off as a technology for recruiting? Interesting question. Do you have children at home? We all have, right? What is the easiest way to reach your children? You call them, they call you back. You call them, they call you back. Sounds familiar? What about our uh, applicants? You call them, phone. You know, phone tag after phone tag, right? Just goes on and on and on. You send them email, they send you back, OK, this time it didn't work. To speed up, the best thing is texting. And that's going to be more different kind of a texting than what we have known so far. And that's where you see you know, texting like WhatsApp. is a consumption of the text, messages, and the intelligence built in that. And then, of course, you know, I mean, like Facebooks of the world, I mean, they're commercializing it, so there is a, a currency part of it that also comes with it. But the important thing is that texting will be one of the most important disrupting technology in the coming years. And if your products don't have that capability, millenniums and new generation and so on, you should pretty much ask for it and at least ask that, when will this be available? Now, in your analytics area as well, I mean, because you gather information, and you need to gather information fast and quick. Well, I'll take you to the next slide. Probably I'll not walk through every scenario, but I'll try to talk about a few things. Stay on top and align to make good HR planning. What kind of HR planning do we do? You know, the earlier days, there used to be a, st a strategic planning three years, and I've been through all of that you know, three years to five years strategic planning, and then there would be an HR planning, and then, you know, the whole planning would go through several iterations, and at the end of the year, I mean, where we started and where we ended, who knows, right? That was how it was. New generation, and the new generation CEO I'm working with, so, so the guy I, re 
I worked with in my company. He came from Bain Consulting, superb guy, you know, typical Ivy League, all of that. Very simple, you know, as far as the strategies are concerned, just few lines, one page deck, and that's all about it. Very, very forward thinking guidelines, and that's it. So what does it do is that it leaves you a lot of room to work together. And I'll give you some examples. We are growing by MNAs. So whoever comes to know about it, we send out text, we send out you know, phone messages, we send out you know, some kind of you know, a Yammer site. That's what we do. Because otherwise, the time to close a deal, if it cannot close the deal in certain number of days, somebody will, else will steal it from us. We don't want that to happen. There is always that competition. There is always that something is out there. And how do we quickly interact? So the business, HR, finance, all of us have to come together and quickly deliver. The earlier MNAs, our MNAs are smaller MNAs. You know, very, very few, very targeted. They are not like the big ones. There would be some of the big ones. But they're like, you know, somebody was talking to me earlier. I mean, there were like hundreds of MNAs. And that's what the companies do now. So that's the whole planning process. Social texting for collaboration and conversation. I mean, that we have kind of you know, already advances in the predictive analytics, big data and analysis. I mean, this is really important, how to stay on top. What our people are asking for. Do we know what they're asking for? How do we capture that data? How do we analyze that data? And how do we know what's the real priority? Earlier in some conversation, I heard that you know, so there was some analysis done or there was some insight. So, you know, with that insight, you know, you kind of, you know, know that people are leaving you because there is no career path or there is no career room or there is a career center. I think that was the term it was used. But it's kind of, you know, based on some engagement surveys and so on, right? And you could be right. You could be right. But the newer, you know, generation is not only based on one criteria. And that's what I'm trying to you know, harp on. You need many different data points. Multiply the number of the employees you have. And if you have a large number of employees in the organization, think about it how vast it is. And how will you get to the point quickly? And yet it is effective, right? Company culture, important for success. Live streaming and videos. I saw some, some you know, presentations earlier by our vendors. You know, so they're talking about training and onboarding and so on. The most effective way of training is actually by videos, mobile-based videos. I'm hiring some people. It's a Black Friday, and they have to go out and sell, choose a product, whatever. The request comes to us, let's say, in the first week of November, right? And they have to be starting the sale process starts you know, sometime in the second or third week of November, Black Friday, right? What do you do? You have to get those people, you have to onboard those people, and you have to train them on those products. What is the most effective way of doing it? Mostly I'm seeing that, you know, it's the video-based training. It's not that, you know, so I will not discount the fact that they would still be training on the leadership training and other kind of training, which is, you know, document-based and PowerPoint-based and book-based, and that will probably still continue. But to quickly get to the point and get people on board, understand the product, and very interactive, so you see exactly a salesman interacting with a buyer. What do we expect you to do? How to close the deal, right? Social texting, I kind of you know, touched. It's a very important part of our culture and advances in the, in the predictive analytics. Predictive analytics, by the way, I found that all my different areas, it shows up in some shape or form. So I saw your slide earlier where you said, okay, does analytics play a role here or not? And you know, I mean, most cases, yes, it does. And that's kind of you know, interesting for us because if this is so important, yet when I look at my team on analytics, maturity standpoint, in a scale of zero to five, I would say I'm probably at 0.5 to about one and being very honest. Why is it so? Why is it so? And most companies I've been to, you know, very advanced companies like, you know, even 
I worked for PwC, IBM, I mean, that was some time ago, but even Campbell's, we are a very data-driven company, but yet, nobody is willing to invest. Money just goes on. Yet, I think this trend will change, and the first time in my life I'm actually interacting with the CEO who actually came from an analytics company. They sold analytics to their customers, and that's what Acosta even does. Interesting, isn't it? Higher right ensured good candidate experience. We talked about some of it. Social texting, really important. Get to them, get them quickly, get them in, send them the information. You know, the texting, again, I mean, as you can see, I mean, it's, it's got a lot of things. There are links available now. There are videos available now. Through the text, it's not just, okay, come see me at certain time. But you could do a lot of innovative st stuff. And you can even look at those texts, and you can form an idea and an opinion. You know, there's other important things which I did not mention here. But as a part of the overall social media, I do not know, I mean, how far you guys, do you know about, you know, some products like the crawling technology? You know, okay. One of the extensively used technology used around social texting as well as media, you know, the different social media is crawling. When you are hiring someone, especially at a senior level, you want to know what kind of person he is or she is. Now, not going into any of the, you know, privacy issues or, or privacy laws or anything, you know, because this is all public domain and public information. So we hired a company and all they did was that because we were at that time lobbying for certain things in Washington, D.C., the GMOs, and we very strongly felt about it. So what if, if I'm hiring someone at a senior level and that person does not believe in what we try to promote? That information is now available and you can make use of it. Because there are a lot of times where people come to the interviews, you know, you can only ask you know, so many questions in the interview. The process is still relevant, but there are other things to supplement it. And one of the other things to supplement is these type of technologies and it is available, right? So on one side, we do bulk hiring. A lot of people have to be hired in a very short period of time. And there are those focused hires where we do a very different kind of research, right? Ensure engaged and productive workforce. See, here it comes that really we have to think that the way the work gets done. Typically in the past, the, the way the work has got done is not going to be the same in the future. We all agree on that, right? A lot of professions are going away. Somebody, I think, in the earlier you know, presentation, they talked about an EA you know, created the presentation slides and all that. It's a shrinking world. I mean, there are no EAs now. We have just very few left. You do your own calendar. You manage your own meetings. You pretty much take care of your schedule. That's expected, isn't it? So there are a lot of tools. It's going to come, and it's going to automate your processes whether you know factory situation, sales situation, no matter where you are. There is initial investment to all of this, agreed. But with the initial investment, I can guarantee you that your overall productivity over a period of time will enhance, right? I mean, right or wrong, this is the fact of the world. So for that, in order to engage that kind of a productive workforce, one is a large part of it will be automated. But there will be other people who have to learn how to automate how to run those systems, and how to run those processes. So your shift is coming, and it's apparent. No matter how hard you try, you can't change it, right? Cloud computing, this is all how to engage. You know, we talked about Workday, how to engage. One of the real important things about Workday is how it engages. How am I supposed to engage? Now, one of the things I must tell you that as a part of the engagement is that, you know, if you just buy the product, and I say that even before, if you just buy the product, and if you think that, you know what, I just bought the product, so my company will be very engaged and everything will be hunky-dory, not going to happen. It also goes to my previous slide of, of culture building. Is the culture building along with the other things. So let me just skip through some of the things. So, you know, so ensuring engagement, these are the different things, you know, they kind of you know, show up in every slide, as you can see. Compliance has taken a new route. There will be more and more compliant issues. The laws are getting stringent. Companies have become global. We heard about that, you know, several times in our conversation. And it's going to be harder, actually. 
a large number of people spread across the globe with different kind of laws, rules, and regulations, how to manage. And you can see that the ERPs are claiming to handle a large part of it, but probably not all. With that, I think I'll just show you that, you know, from our standpoint, you know, these are the different field technologies as we have used, all GPS-enabled people, you know, especially our sales force, they go to the field, they have the smart devices and their analytics, all in the fingerprint. So we were able to ship out. Right now, I mean, we have covered about 24,000 people who are on the floor, who are on the shop floor, who are on the road. They use these technologies. And we are still trying to grow from there. So we've done something and we feel really proud about it. The journey goes on. And we hope, and we'll do even better in the future. Well, with that, I just leave you for questions. I think I did good on time, I think, right? I just skipped a little bit, but yes, sure, absolutely. Very good question. You know, I mean, when I look around, you saw that we are going online. So we are in store, we are online, we are out of store, you know, as you saw. But where is it growing? And we sell analytics. So really what is important is that if you have to go out and hire those people, our HR people have to understand what the business is. What is the solve of the problem that we're going to do? What these people will come and what will they offer to us? And not many people quite understand even now. The traditional model will still continue, but we are looking for more innovative ways of doing work. One of the innovative ways of doing work, I do not know if you guys know about a company called as Booked Out. Do you know about this company, Booked Out? Small company, very small. So what they are doing is that they are creating a large pool of resources, like the freelancers and you know those type of people. And we recognize the fact that not everything will be required on a permanent basis. There will be an organization where there would be number of people required to do certain amount of work. Yet, there will be that sporadic needs. Some event, and especially in our business, sporadic needs. Where do we go? How do I hire? Or do I need to even hire? So we are looking for these type of technologies. But again, I mean, if we do have those technologies supporting us in our sourcing to create a candidate pool, right? In addition to that, we from HR, how do we engage still and get them in and get productive? They are not going to be the typical class employees anymore. But HR will still play a very leading role in, in handling their requests, their, their needs, and their demands. Makes sense? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just thinking I'm, I'm right. But there are many different things in this picture. No more questions? I think then I did a very good job. I mean, you know? <laughs> All right. I mean, I really thank you for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you. You're welcome.